Hello everyone. Although it is possible to start live coding from scratch, as in without a safety net, I believe it is wise to have a general setup file that takes care of some of the basic things, of the procedures that in itself aren't strictly musical, that take some time and need to be executed in a more or less specific order. Just to give you an example, pushing the proxy space, booting the server, loading stored synth apps and sound files, and so on. Such a file not only saves time, but assures that everything is efficiently put together so that one can start making music comfortably. And this video is about that, showing you my approach, which in turn synthesizes various approaches for the creation of a safety net that is flexible enough to be recycled for different musical contexts. So, the best way to begin, to me, is to start with those actions that don't require the server to be booted. I like to make sure that I'm going to start with a clean page. The following remove all and free all methods are, as far as I've seen at the Super Collider forum, quite standard and are particularly handy if one wishes to reboot the server or if one has been doing some coding before and wants to clean the pipes. I'm sure there are more elegant ways to do this, but this works, and I like to keep things simple. Here, we free all previously allocated buffers, and we remove all items from registry. The next thing we can do is to increase the number of buffers for loading samples, and to allocate more real-time memory to the server. We then carry on by pushing the proxy space, defining a tempo clock, and assigning fade time and quantization values. Of course, tempo, fade time and quant can later on be modified according to one's musical needs. If one's considering the use of MIDI controllers, which is beyond the scope of this video, one could here initialize the MIDI client class and connect the devices. Next step is to boot the server. Wait for boot is an instance method that will evaluate everything that's inside of the function once the server has been booted and is idle. It replaces s.boot. Inside of the function we will make a dictionary for the sound files that we want to have access to, add the synth apps that were previously designed in a separate file, add the snippets file, which has also been previously created, include a limiter and free all nodes in the server. Regarding the sound samples, I think this bit of code is extremely helpful. It basically consists of three parts. The first one where a dictionary is created, a second one where the individual sound files contained in this case in the sound files folder are added to the dictionary, and a third part where the files from that dictionary are loaded into buffers. Let's exemplify this in a separate file. Basically, we localize the path name of the folder sound files. Here, the entries method provides us with a list of all files contained in that folder and buffer.read allocates a buffer and reads a sound file into it. This iteration process is controlled by the message 4, and because the indexing starts with 0, the number of iterations required to complete the list equals the number of files in the folder minus 1. Here we are not using absolute path names, which is convenient if we want our code to be transportable. It also makes the samples within the computer always reachable, especially if we at some point in the future decide to rearrange our folders. 
Bear in mind that the sound files folder must be in the same parent folder as this setup file. Another advantage is that through the dictionary we have access to the folders that we have strategically named according to their content. This helps a lot in finding the right sound within a large collection of samples. For instance, the keys method allows us to inspect all subfolders contained in the sound files folder. So if we decide to use, let's say, piano samples, this line will play the first item of the piano folder. Right after loading the sound files, we can load the synth apps. In my case, in the synths ready to use file. And because synths ready to use is in the parent folder together with the setup file, we can without further inconvenience call it with a load relative method. The same thing applies to the snippets. Let's introduce a useful command. By separating the loading of the sound files, the synthefs and the snippets by s.sync, we make sure that SuperCollider won't execute any further beyond this point until the previous code has been fully processed. Everything that appears before the s.sync should be completed before SuperCollider carries on processing more code. Important is that s.sync must always be called from within a routine. Something wait for boot is converted into if inside of the function appears a method like sync or wait. Stage limiter, developed by Batuan Boscourt, is included as part of the Batlib quark. Suggested by its name, it's a limiter and prevents the sound from exceeding amplitude values over 0 dB. The last line, s.freeall, will free the notes in the server. A quick word about the Snippets Quark, developed by A. James Harkins. Snippets are shortcuts to chunks of code that one has previously written so that they can be called during a performance. They save time and prevent typos. In order to use them, I have created an SCD file called My Snippets that, again, because it's been saved in the same folder as the setup file, it can be loaded by means of the load relative method. Let's briefly switch to the file. The syntax of this quark is quite straightforward. After the put method, one indicates between quotation marks the name of the snippet and separated by a comma, and again between quotation marks, the bit of code that will be used as template. One can employ double sharps to indicate where the cursor will be placed. The text between these double sharps will appear selected. So what I do? I assign a p-bind for each synthf designed in the synthefs file. These p-binds include the keys that are most likely for me to tweak during a performance. Usually, I place the double sharps right after the tilde, which allows me to quickly provide a name to a node proxy. Finally, and by executing this line, one can assign a hotkey that will activate the panel with a list of the names of the snippets. So far, this is my setup file, and if we run it, we can see that we are ready to do some live coding with a safety net below us. We can rerun our setup code and check that everything is perfect. We can also verify that we are in a proxy space. We can check the phase time, quant and tempo values and start playing with the insertion of snippets.
There is a final bit of code that I would like to share with you. And although it's not present in my setup file, it always appears in my sessions. I call it mix and it's a node proxy. It mostly appears at the top of my code and it consists of a gverb passed through a low pass filter, all balanced by a crossfade to ugen. It's nothing too fancy, but I use it when I want, if I want of course, to apply a general reverb to the node proxies. This way I forget about reverbs and I obtained a homogeneous sound. Here's an example of how I use it. I hope this video was helpful. Please let me know if you have any questions, suggestions or comments. Thanks a lot for watching. Goodbye.